E.T. Damn, look at that son bitch go. He hauling ass. That thing come by my house, I kill it. <laughs> that little rat looking thing just got ate. Damn, nature, you scary. The video you are about to watch is protected by the Corporation of the United States of America and parent company the District of Columbia's Constitution Bill of Rights Amendment 1, Free Speech and Free Press. We are also protected under the United Nations General Assembly Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People or D.R.I.P. also known as DRIP Articles 14 and 16 Article 14. One states that indigenous people have the right to establish and control their educational systems and institutions providing education in their own languages, in a manner appropriate to their cultural methods of teaching and learning. Article 14. Two indigenous individuals, particularly children, have the right to all levels and forms of education of the state without discrimination. Article 16. One indigenous peoples have the right to establish their own media in their own languages and to have access to all forms of non-indigenous media without discrimination. Article 16. Two states shall take effective measures to ensure that state-owned media duly reflect indigenous cultural diversity. States, without prejudice ensuring full freedom of expression, should encourage privately owned media to adequately reflect indigenous cultural diversity. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the video here on Action News Network. So it's time to wake up, get your mom right, get back into this. Um, I'm dropping multiple videos a week at this point in time to catch up. So, you know, I've been digging in the craze, digging in the book craze, digging in the vault, trying to see um, if anything I can come up with. And check this out. This is a letter from William Penn, proprietary and governor of Pennsylvania in America to the Committee of the Free Society of Traders of that province residing in London, containing a general description of the said province and its soil, air, water, seasons, and produce, both natural and artificial, and the good um, increases, therefore, thereof. Uh, of the na natives, uh, aborigines, their language, customs, and manners, diet, houses, or, or wigwams. It talks about the natives. And he says, the natives I shall consider in their persons, language, manners, manners religion, and government with uh, my fence of their original. For their persons, they're generally tall, straight, well-built, and of singular proportion. They tread strong and clever, mostly walk with a lofty chin of complexion black, but by design. You hear that, right? Of complexion black, but of design. That's the gypsies in England. The gypsies probably being the Moors. They uh, grease themselves with bare fat clarified and using no defense against the sun or weather. Their skins must need to be, need be swarthy. Their eye is little and black, but not unlike a straight looked Jew. Wow, but not unlike a straight looked Jew. The must uh, the thick lip and flat nose, so frequent with the East Indians and blacks, are not common to them for I have seen as comely European like faces among them of both as on your side of the sea and truly an Italian complexion half not much more of the white and the noses of several of them have much of the Romans 
basically what he's saying is that he can see fucking European features in the fucking people he meet here. Now, what is one of the things they say about us? They say, oh, we, we look the way that we do because we have European in us. Not that, you know, the Europeans just happen to look like us, right? It has to be the other way around, right? Because, you know, the the um, non-dominant species or non-dominant gene takes over the dominant gene, right? Being them being non-dominant and us being dominant. Makes no fucking sense, you know? Um, even though he's trying to be nice, but, you know, still, he's still trying to, you know, up his people and shit. And if any either way, anyhow, let's continue. Um, cause I digress. It says seven, their language is lofty, whatever the fuck lofty means, yet narrow, but like the Hebrew. Let me read that again. Again, seven, their language is lofty, yet narrow, but like the Hebrew, but like the Hebrew, but like the Hebrew. Insignificant, insignification. Full like shorthand in writing, one word, uh, one word serveth in the place of three, and the rest are supplied by the understanding of the hearer. All right, imperfect in their tenses, wanting in their moods, part, uh, or part, part, participles, adverbs, conjunctions, interjunctions. I have made it. My business, okay. I made it my business to understand it. It's kind of, it, of their custom and manners. There's much to be said. I will begin with the children. So soon as they're born, they wash them in the river, baptizing them basically. And while we're young and in cold weather, to shoot, they plunge them in the river so hard and embolden them, having wrapped them. And a cloud, they laid them on a straight, what then bore a little more than leaf of leaf and breath of the child. And the children will go very young at nine months. Commonly, they will wear only a small clout around their waist till they are big. If boys, they go fishing to rape for the woods, which is about 15, then they hunt. And after giving some proofs of their manhood by a good return of their skin, they will marry else. It is a shame to think of a wife. The girls stay with their mothers and help to hold the ground, plant corn, and carry burdens. They do well to use them to that young. They must do when they are old. For the wives are the true servants of their husbands, otherwise the men are very affectionate to them. This is from a letter from William Penn, the proprietary and governor of Pennsylvania in America. To the- 27 hearts beat. Phil is 103 amazing facts about the Black Indian of the Western Hemisphere outlined by Canyon, a non reservationist. Alright? He has like some long ass name. Um, definitely should read this book. A couple people have done some things on this. I'm gonna do a little. I'm not gonna read, I'm not gonna read all. Penetrate the psyche of my people, including 
cause a mental stimulus that ignites the spirit and breaks the spell of amnesia that currently plagues most. I mean, he kind of sums it up for all of us um, who kind of do this and who's doing this here on YouTube. Um, it is like the core amnesia in all of us at one time. Had very few of us on this platform have known the truth since day one. Some of us might have speculated. Some of us might have felt like something was up, but none of us had it all together. Now, I'm not gonna read the whole introduction. I'm gonna read parts of it. Um, this work has been written in a special way to psychologically and spiritually heal the mental spiritual damages that have been done to the black indigenous native of Western Hemisphere so-called American Indian. It is designed to make the black indigenous native of the Western Hemisphere aware of the psychological and spiritual damages that have been done. It is not for everyone. It is an antidote for a degree of sickness that has been embedded deeply within the well-being of my people. My people have been programmed to think that Africa is their homeland when home is right under their feet. All right, this work has repetitive tones to it for a reason. It is designated, designed to have, um, to deprogram the systematic programming of the Black Indigenous Native of the Western Hemisphere throughout the Americas on how they have been mentally trained since birth to view themselves and how they have been mentally trained since birth to view and perceive their own ancestors. All right, he talks about himself being named Kenya. He's from West Side of Chicago. His father's side is Kawada, um, Kasuta, Shawnee, and Tuscarora. Well, the side is um, uh, Saligi, Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Chula. And Chula should remind you of T'Challa from freaking took uh, the T and put the apostrophe in and take the U out and put an A and the L I think would have the child right just um food for thought let's continue on alright one black Indians have lived in the western hemisphere since time and more two black Indians were now spawned or created as a result of Africans coming to the Western Hemisphere during the transatlantic slave trade, mixing in with Native people of the Western Hemisphere region, also known as Native American Indians. Three, Native or Indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere, also known as Indians, and never refer to themselves or their ancestors as Indian. We never use the word Indian since most people accustomed to this are accustomed to this title. We're Indian, Red Man, Native American, and European terms, right? Four. Or native or indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere, aka Indians, possess different physi physiological features, hair texture, bone structure, and skin tone vary. Five, all native or indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere, aka Indians, did not and do not have high cheekbones, slanted eyes, reddish copper skin, or black hair type. The hair on black, straight black hair, okay? <clears throat> Sorry. All native or indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere did not live in teepees or in pueblos. Seven, it is difficult to it is difficult for society to accept black Indian as being native or indigenous Western Hemisphere region because society has been brainwashed with fabricated fake images of indigenous people in the Western Hemisphere. The U.S. government selected a certain physiological type of Indian to promote the world. This is real Indian. Eleven dark-skinned natives, indigenous to the Western Hemisphere, and Indians were we classified during the 1700s and 1800s as Negroes and coloreds. Twelve certain dark-skinned natives were allowed to settle on reservations with pale-skinned natives, but most were not. 
13 pale skinned natives came about as a result of the original dark skinned natives breeding with pale skinned Europeans. A light skinned native born in the junior would again breed with a pale skinned European, thus, the progeny of the junior become a pale, but genetically possessive. Right? 14 dark skinned natives. Dark skinned natives, indigenous to the Western Hemisphere, aka Indians, were given an ultimatum go to Oklahoma, be an Indian, or stay where you at and be a Negro. Most dark skinned natives, indigenous to the Western Hemisphere, were reclassified as Negro colored in the 17 and 1800s and found themselves in the 20th and 21st century reclassified as Black Americans and African Americans. Dark skinned natives and indigenous to the Western Hemisphere, aka Indians, who embraced Spanish culture during the colonial area, either uh, by choice or force, have found themselves engulfed or assimilated into Spanish culture and Spanish language. Now, most of them have lost knowledge of themselves and their true identity. They have um, been reclassified as Latino and Hispanic. Mm. So, this is the last couple of ones. You know, they explain how we got these titles. 17. All in the native indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere, a okay, uh, Indian spoke different dialects of a language synonymous to the Hebrew language. So again, the language that most of them spoke, different dialects of a language synonymous to the Hebrew language. Okay? Seems like most languages I'm starting to figure out came from Hebrew. Alright? <clears throat> Most early European, this is 18, European writers learned in the 1400s throughout the 1800s, uh, including Pilsen and Jews, agreed that the heathen savage of, uh, of the Western Hemisphere, the Indians, throughout the Americas of Adal, were descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. 19, a Pilsen European by the name of James Adair. He lived with the Indians in the 18th century. He wrote a book, uh, History of the American Indian, claiming that the Indians were uh, descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. 20 kind of repeats that. He gave 23 arguments, this is number 20, 23 arguments to support his findings that the so-called American Indians were really the lost tribes of Israel. 24, we all spoke about this before, the Reverend Jefferson Jackson in South Carolina Cherokee <clears throat> started and promoted the fake title of African American that has been imposed upon black Indians in this distance in the Western Hemisphere. 24, 2025, it has been quite profitable to brainwash these people in the Western Hemisphere and to think that they, that Africa is their native land. 26, this, there's a campaign currently underway by the U.S. government and U.S. government Swazilandia that preaches doctrine that the Black Indian of the Western Hemisphere is a result of African mixture and that they are not from this hemisphere, that they are like the sons of slaves of the Indians. 27, most so-called Black Americans, or so-called African Americans, when asked if they have any Native American in their family, 95% will respond with yes, and this and this, most so-called Black Americans, are able to give you the name of the tribe. That's because they are that people, they are not a, a half some of that tribe in them. You are Cherokee, you are Choctaw, you are Blackfoot, so on, so be it. 28, most so-called Black Americans or so-called African Americans find it difficult to accept themselves as being native or indigenous to the Western Hemisphere because of the program fabricated images of native people in the Western Hemisphere. Fakes and images has been indoctrinated into um, yeah, uh, and indigenous ancestors have been routinely drilled into your psyche since birth. The black Indian image is not registered with your psyche because of the programming. All right, 29, your school system and that media have been the two biggest giants behind programming into the masses, fake fabricated images of a native or indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere. This is why you always have to make sure your kids in school, the CPS take your kids away, if they in school, all this other crap, you go to jail, whatever, fines. So forth, so be it, right? 30 native or indigenous people was in the hemisphere. Okay, Indians built pyramids and pyramid mounts like the ancient Egyptians. All right, we know that. We talk about that plenty of times. Teach his own. 32, the term war was applied to dark skinned, brown skinned, and reddish uh, brown skinned people who were not only indigenous to Europe but to the West and North Africa. Okay? Uh, even black Indians of the Western um, Hemisphere will also double this title. All right, 33 black indigenous, black, well, this is just black Celtics, Celtics, black indigenous Britain, indigenous Portuguese, indigenous black Spanish, or um, also known as Moors and have long knowledge of indigenous people in this hemisphere, Western Hemisphere. These Moors are well informed of the different customs, traditions, languages, and natives. 
of the Western Hemisphere, these dark skinned Europeans, Moors, who use buffers by the pale skinned Europeans to help colonize the New World. Uh, these indigenous black Europeans that gave Moors not only solicited the New World to pale skinned Europeans, but also waged war on us, the Western Hemisphere Indians, right? 34 certain black Europeans, aka Moors, uh, that underwent to settle to have clergymen, European nobility shared a common consensus or yeah, consensus with pale skinned Europeans that the common consensus of being that the indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere, us Indians, were in tapes, heathen savages because we live natural lifestyles the way, uh, yeah, the, the way higher, higher contenders live, right? 35, dark Britain, dark skin Britain, well, dark, both dark skin and um, pale skin Europeans who were either Celtic, Britain, Gaelic, all, um, whatever have you, who were fleeing religious persecution in Europe or struggling to preserve ancient traditional customs, the pagan ways of Holland, of Irish of the world, went to the bosom of the Indians um, who held on to and were practicing traditional spirit spirituality. Both cultures were different, however, both were able to relate to each other's gods, all right? That's how they intermixing and got that bullshit into our system. But six or more, so I'll never get uh, Christopher Columbus' voice in the world. He wasn't lost, we all know this. He knew exactly where the hell he was going, what he was there to do, simply because of who was on the boat with him, all right? 37, the U.S. constitutional government is a plagiarized copy of the black Indian government system, the Iroquois Nation. We spoke about that before. 38, the founding fathers did not find anything. They went to the black Indians, the Iroquois Nation, seeking assistance to break away from the chief back in England. King George III, the Iroquois swept them system of government. The only part of the so-called government the founding fathers left out was the matriarchy, all right, because the black Indian woman ruled in the Iroquois Nation. 39, most black Indians in the Western Hemisphere found themselves seduced by European lifestyle, customs, and traditions. When the American Revolutionary Wars, 40, broke out, black Indians found themselves fighting against their own kingsmen. Some black Indian nations sided with the British, while other black Indian nations sided with the colonial rebels, aka the Americans. I believe this war broke out twice. The Civil War was another rendition of this same war played out again. This time, you know, with the British trying to recapture the nation alongside with the Vatican. But that will be another video altogether. 41, after black American Indian nations um, helped to set the colonial government in America in addition uh, to help sponsor military support for the new colonial government, black Indian nations continue to fight and war amongst themselves as they did before and after the European settlement here. Black Indians were not conquered by European as a so called white man, but Indians have a rich history of intertribal warfare. We fought ourselves before they came, we fight ourselves when they were here, and when they leave, we'll continue to fight ourselves. All right, 43, after the colonial government was established, America, black and Indian nations continue to aid the new colonial government with military assistance on other black Indian nations that fought against their expansion. 44, General Matt Anthony Wayne, aka the Black Snake, was a black Indian starting under the George Washington administration. The army of General Anthony Wayne consisted of mostly black Indians in the ranks, as it did the entire colonial arm, arm government army, besides black Indians beginning at the bulk of the new colonial government. Morris also filled the ranks, all right? So, as we do to this day, we, uh, so that's how I was all right, not hard to believe. In 45, George Washington established treaties, contracts, various black Indian nations as well as the Moors for military support against other black Indian nations who did not support the occupancy of the new colonial government. <coughs> 46, after colonial government in America confiscated most black Indian lands, they, the colonial government, refused to pay black Indian warriors pensions for this military support. During the American Civil War, Black Indians joined the Confederate Army in hopes of winning uh, to secure what little ancestral lands they had. You know, they don't tell you that. That's why I say the Civil War is way different than what you fucking thought. Alright? Um, 48 of Black Indians joined the Union side of the American War to fight for their own objectives as well. One of these those being um, seeking prosperity within the American system. Uh, Nick Jack, also known as Nick Jack, was a black um, 
Chica Mwagwa, black, a black Indian ancestor, led raids against the colonial rebel army. Americans during the colonial rebel uprising, American Revolutionary War, he fought alongside the British Tories. His hideout was a cave in the vicinity of what is known as Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, in the state of Georgia, in the region known as Cow County. There's a park, a road, and a creek named after this great warrior. I hope it's not Nigga Jack Park for this. <laughs> is... All right, 50. There were thousands upon thousands of black Indians who fought in the American Civil War and in wars before and after the war who were black Indians or native to Western and the Hemisphere region, but were oblivious to this fact. They only thought themselves to be Negroes. Their parents and their parents who had lost the knowledge of themselves, tribal identity, and were honestly simply passed on the next generation to colonize title of Negro to their children. Thus, unbroken chain of ignorance continues to survive. The 51 was local soldiers with black Indians dispatched by the U.S. Army to assist in the colonization and confiscation of other black Indian lands. We know this. Many black Indians who fought against this 52 fought in the American Civil War on either on the Confederate or the Union side were not acknowledged as being indigenous or native. They were acknowledged as just being Negroes. Most of the Navajo talkers who were used to assist the U.S. government in World War II were blue black Indians. The photo and film footage of black Navajo participating in the war were carved out of history. The term 54, the term Negro color, was not only part of black Indians, the psychological and spiritual removed them from their lands. These kind of cycles were applied to black Indians who were incorporated into the slave market. 55, black Indians who did slave raids on each other before and after European arrival. Okay, 56, black Indians on other black Indians and slaves. These slaves were also be classified as Negroes. Um, 59, I know everyone says like Queen Latifah is a, you know, um, a Western indigenous um, Indian. All right, uh, 60 most black Indians today refuse to accept their indigenous because they have fallen victims to a spell of fake imagery. If their hair isn't straight or curly, their cheekbones are not high, neither eyes are slanted nor skin like a reddish hue. They simply decide they are black and from Africa. Most black, 61 most black um, Indians of the Western Hemisphere who are falsely labeled as African, a black African, um, fought their, for their civil rights during the 1940s. Through the 1960s, they were not known as black Indians or being indigenous. Some knew others didn't. They, under, they were under the cloak and title of Negro, Negro Rights Movement, aka Black Indian Civil Rights Movement. Okay. 62, most interstate highways and roads and what is now known as the United States of America used to be at one time black Indian trails and pathways that led to other black Indian towns and black Indian cities. The paths were widened, laced with concrete and renamed interstate highways. By the Pale One, 63 in most cities and towns today, and what is now known as the United States of America, sit on top of ancient black Indian, black Indian cities and towns that were there first. 64 most in most cities and towns in what is now the United States of America, there remains hundreds of thousands of black Indians buried under the concrete as a result of casualties of war. They went around just wiping us out of our towns and cities, man. These people are fucking crazy, man. 65 St. Louis, Missouri, we talked about this before. Um, used to be a black Indian city called um, Cahokia. Cahokia at one time was the largest city north of Mexico and one of the largest cities in the world outranking most cities in Europe. 66 black Indians did not only use paths and trails as a mean of transportation on the surface, but also used the underground cave tunnel system. 67 black Indians revealed taught and navigated Europeans through the underground cave tunnel system, which is now being used by the elites and shit. Um, 68, games such as basketball, soccer, lacrosse originated from um, black Indians in the Western Hemisphere. Black Indians play dice games just as they continue to do on most inner city corners and what is known as the United States of America. And the source. Um, 83, depending on which European nations Black Indians had intercourse with or formed treaties with, 
also dependent upon how their identity was e eventually altered by Indian nations who intercourse with Spain, eventually became known by the colonized as Latino and Hispanic. Black Indians who have intercourse with the French became known by the colonized as Creole, Black, French, and Haitian. By Black Indians who intercourse with the British became known as the title colonized as Negro or colored. Black Indians who become victims of Black British subjugation of stool going through the colonized title changes for a moment. They are personally known as Black Americans and African Americans. This is why all of us who are different peoples are the same people but don't know who the fuck we are, all right? A foremost Black uh, Indian nations honored matriarchal societies, uh, most Black Indian uh, chiefs were women, uh, a six Black Asians from various dynasties, Chao Shang and many others migrated from Asia thousands of years ago to these regions, now known as North, South, and Central America. These Black Asians mix in with the Black natives who were already occupying these lands. This is why why some natives or indigenous people in the Western Hemisphere and Indians have high cheekbones or slanted eyes. This type of image of the native of the Western Hemisphere has been widely promoted. Other natives who do not possess these features were carved out of history to promote how other natives look while not have been bouncing move uh, for the colonizer. 88 huge model of stones heads have been unearthed in Mexico in this region. This ancient culture has come to be known as the Olmec people. Past and present archaeologists and anthropologists both agree that the Olmec represent not only one of the oldest cultures found in the Western Hemisphere, but both agree that the Olmec represents the mother culture of the Aztec, Inca, and Maya civilization. Also, they're Negroes, all right? I think he says here in 89, some people teach the Olmec migrated from the Nile Valley region of East Africa to the Western Hemisphere. If this is true, they were only received by black natives who already residing here. Uh -huh. Many black Indians who became indoctrinated in the European lifestyle during European orchestrated fraternities and secret societies, such as the Order of Freemasons in 1891, the black Indian Joseph Bryant, um, Teganagda of the Iroquois Nation became a black or a Freemason. In uh, 92, there was black Indian natives of the Western Hemisphere who had known blood ties of various clans in Africa. All right. Okay, many black uh, Indians, this is five, east of the Mississippi River, wear turbans, adorn feathers, besides their languages having the idiom of the Hebrew tongue, wearing the turban with the physical cool sign of the Israelite linked to the Hebrew Israelites. Uh, 96, certain black Indian uh, nations acted as police, professionally established European colonies. These black Indian police protect the European settlements for other black Indians who did not want European settlement on their land. 97, the colonial rebel uprising, which is known as the American Revolutionary War, was mainly one for the following two reasons. One, the new colonial rebel government constitutional foundation was a black Indian constitutional government foundation. That black Indian nation being an Air Force nation, most of the military support came from black Indians indigenous to the Western Hemisphere region. Other military support came from the Moors. The Moors support came um, support came from Moors that went were from Spain, France, Portugal, and Morocco. Other Moors support came from renegade Moors from England that broke away from England to support the colonial rebels. Also, keep in mind. When Spain, France, Portugal gave assistance to the colonial rebels, they existed black Indians that also filled the ranks of these armies. Remember, black Indians have been migrating to Europe for quite some time. Before the American Revolutionary War, some of these black Indians knew uh, where they were returning to, while those who uh, were thoroughly colonized did not. 98, during the Seminole Wars, the U.S. government recruited other black Indians to assist them in the war against the Seminoles. 99, black Indians who have lost knowledge of themselves, tribal identity, were labeled as Negroes colors, were also recruited in the U.S. Army to fight the Seminoles. The United States, the United States government had to abandon the war with the Seminoles. They cannot defeat them. True fact, Seminoles to this day are not defeated. They have a treaty with the United States government and have a peace treaty and are at ease or stand down with weapons. All right, they came to a truce. Um, 101, uh, many black Africans did that, uh, many Africans that come to the United States 
in this present day and time. No, most so-called African Americans are indeed black indigenous Indians. One or two, most foreigners from the nation's board are waiting for the so-called African American to reclaim their rightful titles. It's true too. I met a lot of uh, people from other countries who do know this and are waiting for us to wake up and shit. But we're such a stubborn, hard-headed ass fucking people. Um, 103. The reclaiming of the identity of Black Indigenous Indian in the Western Hemisphere region is not a difficult task. It does not require a petition outside of yourself to someone else to acknowledge who you are, your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, the information that has been passed down through your lineage to you from them is the announcement. Neither does it require testing of your own DNA by any of the colonizers' pseudo contraptions. The earth and the ancestral spirits know perfectly who you are, just claim who you are. That's true. You don't need their approval. I know that I'm an American Indian. That's the proper title. I know that I'm indigenous to, to North America or to the Americas in general. I know that I am an Aboriginal. I know I'm copper colored. I know I'm not from Africa, all right? May I have some African blood in me? Possibly. I possibly have European blood in me. But I know throughout and through, I am an American Indian. I am copper colored, all right? And I am the color of this land. And I come from this land. I don't need them. I don't need no fucking... I don't need anybody to tell me who I am. I don't need nobody to tell me that I'm African. I don't need nobody to tell me that I'm American. I don't need the title of African American. I know I'm indigenous, I'm an Indian, and I'm an Indian of the Americas. I don't need no paperwork, neither do you. Just know who you are. Your ancestors will guide you the rest of the way.